This is the uh, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I am David Bloomberg. With me is Maureen Scanlon, Sarah Northrup, and Bob Riddle. Um, voting tonight, maybe on the first one, us three, and the second one sure. with Bob. Is that sound good? Bob. Like, Whichever one. Okay, so, one. so more, how about more, I'm just make a decision. Maureen, uh, Sarah, and I will vote on the first uh, matter, and then Bob. Okay. Sarah and me will vote on the second matter. Um, I'm David Bloomberg, did I say that? This is Carolyn Mish, who's uh, from the Office of Planning and Sustainability, providing staff support to the board. Uh, we have two matters on this agenda for tonight, and notice of tonight's hearing was published on November 27th, December 5th, 2019. Um, we always open first for public comment. If there is anyone here to uh, who would like to address the board about anything that is not related to one of the two applications before us tonight is anyone here for that reason we're just here for the two applications right so um, seeing nobody we'll move on and open the hearing uh, for the special permit requested by david sergil spell uh, pronunciation sort of okay Sergio. is this the one where he's not here correct okay i'm representing this one okay thanks uh, for, it's an application for a special permit to increase a non-conforming setback at 28 Mountain Laurel Path, Florence, map ID 37-88. Um, we'll ask anyone who uh, addresses us to start by giving you us your name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. And we'll ask the representative of the applicant, uh, Mr. Sorgo, to, uh, to start by doing that and by giving us a very brief explanation about the request for the special permit we have the materials in, in our in front Would you like of us. Me to step, stand up there used to be a podium but uh, I, as, as, long as, as long as everyone can hear you or can, can you hear me okay my name is steve solomon i represent valley home improvement um i don't know if you need my address um we've worked on the sorbos house in the past um and they've asked us to draw plans for a screen porch and deck addition on their home and when we originally filed for a permit um, we realized at some point in time when the house was sited the rear and side setbacks were um, mistaken and so literally the home is non-conforming the day it was built and we are here to ask for a special permit for this um, screen porch and deck um, that would um, continue to be non-conforming. Um, the Conservation Commission has signed off my understanding on this, and we're here tonight to ask for, um, you know, approval for um, encroaching into the setbacks. Okay. We also, um, David, have uh, emails from the four neighbors who are all in support of uh, the project. And um, if that carries any weight, I could give you uh, a Sure, we should have at least one copy for the file. Thank yeah. you. Is that the same that was emailed? Yes. Oh, okay. But I don't know if the board has yes. the board seen this. Uh, uh, no. You know yeah, you did actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you. And um, I would like to say, uh, maybe proactively, that um, the Sorbos feel strongly that the way that they live in the house, um, they really feel um, that this is the best placement for the screen porch and the deck. Um, and that it wouldn't make sense for them to um, cite it anywhere else on the house um, based on the configuration of the first floor and how they were. Okay. And, and there is a, um, a certificate of occupancy was issued upon completion of the construction of the house. Uh, and that was more than six years ago, right? Yes, uh, okay. more than 15 years. Okay. Yeah. So it's considered to be a grandfathered pre-existing not pre-existing but grandfather yeah i mean there's non nothing conforming right here. it's non-conforming yeah. now and there was there's no past the statute of limitations right. to go and require to, that to be rectified. right so so we're looking at this application the same as we would under 359.3 yeah. for any request for a finding for an expansion or alteration of a non-conforming um structure right okay so it's a special permit, so to uh, three. Is one of the um, abutters that's been notified Pathways Cold Housing? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and then that's two twenty seven and twenty six, and then the person on Florence Road. Right. And no com no uh, nothing from any other city departments or no comments or concerns. They from also had to get a. I don't think I put that in my staff memo. They did have to get a, a permit from the conservation commission, which they received. Okay. And just so you know, literally no one else can see if this um, permit is approved. No one else would be able to see the screen port to our deck. It literally faces right. into the woods. Right. And as you know, Pathways is a cluster development and it's quite a distance away. So that kind of goes to the question of whether it's substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. No one can, literally, no one can even see it. Literally. And there aren't trails going through that, that those woods adjacent between pathways. If there are, I don't know. And um, from being back there, I, I, mean, I saw no evidence. So if it was, it might be you know, 10 feet past the forest line. And that area is permanently protected open space. So no one else will ever be living there. Right. Okay. Any right. other there questions? Be trails, that's all yeah. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? I think any, any, so we don't need any more. Is there anyone here from the public who wanted to address this application? So I guess we can have a motion to close the public hearing for this application. So moved. Okay. Second. All second. Okay. All, uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing, that's unanimous. And then a motion on the request for a special permit. Shall I make this one? Uh, yeah. 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 I move that we uh, grant a special permit to David Zorkel to increase the non-conforming setback of 28 Mountain Laurel Path, Florence Map ID 3788. Um, not increasing the setback, increasing the non-conforming. In increasing the non-conforming nature of the setback. Right. Okay. Got there it. is more non-conforming than there was non-conforming. Right. Correct. Uh, second. Uh, Oh, any discussion or ready to just vote? I think we're ready. So all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay. Thank you for your time. Sure, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Oh, it's 540, so we can move on to the second and last uh, item on our agenda, which is um, an appeal of the building commissioner's determination for a sign at 32 Masonic Street map, Northampton map ID 31D-120. And uh, the appeal is by Carson Poe and Teresa Perone. Um, I should disclose that it, way back, I think I might have done some legal work for you in connection with something having absolutely nothing to do with this uh, or this location or this matter in any way. Um, I don't view it as uh, a basis for a conflict. I don't. Believe I've represented you for many, many years since then, and there's certainly nothing pending now or necessarily expected in the future. Um, but does anyone present have any objection? If I stay, and, okay, everyone okay with that? Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, go ahead with sure, that great. preface. Um, so Tess Perone Poe, hi, uh, 3 Hampton Ave, number 41, um, currently. Uh, so you're in receipt of our package. Um, this is in regard to the 13 Masonic Street condominium. The building is a condominium with seven individual unit owners across 13 units. There are five commercial units, uh, four of which are owned by uh, an individual owner. Uh, this Can I ask you to come forward? Sure, yeah. It's so funny without the podium. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be able to hide behind yeah. the podium. And you guys we, are so... Uh, we could so push it forward if you want. But no, no, no. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so the signing question has been out of compliance for about seven years now, but um, it only became a priority for us after the fire that happened last November. So my husband and I own units four and eight that we have lived in since 2010. Um, at that time, after the fire, numerous people were coming to the building and uh, approaching us, and that included insurance adjusters and first responders and fire inspectors and attorneys, the media, people were trying to account for everyone and everything in the building. Mm -hmm. And it kept coming up, oh, what about the law firm? And we kept having to explain, nope, that's just an old sign, that business hasn't been 
functioning since late 2012, early 2013. Um, because of that, my husband contacted the building department to inquire about uh, asking that unit owner to bring the sign into compliance by taking it down since that business was no longer operating. And uh, John Fry at the building department asked if we would try to just resolve it on our own among the other owners. So my husband reached out, um, you know, obviously after the fire, there were a lot of other things going on, but we were trying to have regular contact with folks. Um, there was an owner's meeting that was scheduled for March, at which time that unit owner did agree to take the sign down, so that was good. We let John Fry know he wished us well, said good luck with it, great, glad that we don't have to do anything. Um, Many months passed. By September, it had not yet come down, and there had been work at the building that involved a lift, which would have easily facilitated taking it down. Uh, so the unit owner was aware that it was non-compliant for a very long period of time. So in October, my husband submitted the formal complaint to the building department, um, and the decision that we received back was that um, it was not that that sign ordinance was not going to be enforced um, and i think you have the I think you have the language um, because this ordinance has traditionally not been enforced in the city and we will not selectively enforce this complaint um, so my understanding having been on the planning board side of things is that you know the the majority of if not all of our zoning laws are complaint based that you know we don't send someone out kind of driving around looking for violations but that when someone has experienced some difficulty as a result of something being in violation you know you submit a complaint and that triggers the inspection um, and that's how that's how zoning gets enforced um, in this case it, it wasn't clear to me what the rationale would be for opting not to enforce that that sign ordinance in the central business district in the historic downtown um, you know we know that there are many other businesses in town that have closed that have complied voluntarily with the law you know you know La Fiorentina and faces and the optical studio you know all those places went out of business then they take their signs down there's still a few that are that are up and i don't know if complaints have been submitted for a, a couple others that haven't but um but that's that's really the question is you know why what would the rationale would be for choosing not to to enforce in this case um, and I will make a little uh, amendment and say that upon us appealing that decision you know and, and kind of investing in that uh, that appeal the postcard to a butters triggered that owner to take down the sign so receiving some notification official notification from the city was apparently compelling enough to indicate that yes you're in violation yes just take it down after seven years um, and so that happened and so it's the challenge for us is having to have spent you know three hundred twenty five dollars to submit an appeal when you know a postcard from the city of, of that notice of this hearing uh, you know from over a week ago or so was clearly enough enough of an official correspondence to compel the owner to comply um, so that's that's where things are at so what is the relief you're looking for now if it's if the sign's been taken down well so the the appeal is of the building commissioner's decision and so of course we would recover that that 325 dollars likely from the owner or you know i don't know if people are covered from the city, oh you but, just want to complete the appeal yes, process so that precisely. you can go to the owner's group and say look we spent this money yes we have it, um because this has happened in the past uh, there is a a pattern within our condominium association of individuals having to spend money on legal action to compel owners to comply with laws um, that's happened not just with signage ordinances you know but with other things and not just with us but with other owners having to do the same and it's a bad pattern you know that that someone would have to sort of subsidize somebody complying with a law that's on the books that's easily enforced that's easily you know kind of complied with um, so yeah so following through and completing the hearing process is why we're here tonight even if I mean if we were a court which we're not yeah. two we would have two things to say one the matter is moot right. the, the remedy has been received you know without right. the need to, for us to make a decision right 
Um, and the other thing that a court would say is, and we're not, <laughs> that a court doesn't give what are called comfort orders, just yeah. an order so that um, somebody appearing before the court uh, can accomplish something that person wants to accomplish. Right, um, right. But and, and I think it, in it, this case, you know, certainly we were not acting out of some kind of spy or what have you, you know, it's, it was continued frustration, but I think for me being here, again, having been a former planning board member, I think it's very important to establish whether or not the city would like to know that either its zoning laws are enforced or they aren't, or know what the rationale is for selectively not enforcing complaints that have been submitted that have, that have had, um, you know, kind of a rational basis. Um, but, but what, so, so you're asking us to overturn the decision of the building inspector even though it's completely moved? Yes. Just yes. The decision, the decision was to not enforce. Correct. And so the <clears throat> the appeal is of non-enforcement. Correct. And perhaps the removal of the sign is the move piece of this. Right. <clears throat> there is another non-conforming sign in the building right now, so that could be enforced. So but that would have to be a different application. Yeah, we didn't submit a complaint for that one. That's another business that moved. Obviously, you're not looking for any money back from the city. That's not the, what you're saying. You're saying. And isn't it enough to go to the other unit owners and say, whether or not we issue a decision here, isn't it enough to be able to say, you had to spend this money to trigger the sequence that led to the removal of the Not sign? clear, no, it's pr probably not. But I mean, I think that's neither here nor there for you and your board. You know, I mean, right. how our association functions is, is a separate matter. But, yeah. you know, I think, again, as, as a business owner who voluntarily complied with all zoning laws in the past, you know, and has spent, you know, every time a business closes and you have to take down a sign, it's several hundred dollars um, or more, depending on the sign, I guess. Um, you know, and that's something that people voluntarily do because they, they are acting in good faith that the city also believes that these laws are important and that they'll be enforced. And it, it's, um, yeah, it's just odd to me that that would be, that you know that you all would, would let a decision stand that indicates the opposite of that. But the dis but it's moot. It's moot. Um, I don't know. Maybe f people feel differently, and I'm not. I haven't made up my mind here. But but we're being asked to decide. So first of all, I don't think we take lightly any request to overturn a decision of the building inspector because the building inspector has uh, discretion and leeway and professional expertise and other reasons for decisions that are made, but but what's really kind of, has this anything like this ever happened before? Where so we've been asked to make a decision about something that's, that's where on the facts, it's the, the controversy is moot or has been I, I, resolved? Um, I think what typically happens is an applicant would, would, would withdraw um, because it has become moot. But I can't say that in the instance of a request to overturn a decision, an administrative decision, that that's been the case. I'm just thinking of other issues, you know, that might have come before yeah. you that have been resolved or something. Um, but um, never, I've been on the planning board and the zoning board for like about 25 years now, and uh, never saw anything like that. Uh, well. I wonder if um, we're okay with this, this discussion at this point, or should we go into discussion after hearing from? Well, is there? Well, we from the from the, from the building inspector, absolutely. Uh, if you're done, are, are sure. you are you finished for now? And you'll have a chance yeah, to sure. comment further, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Louis Hasbrook, building inspector for Northampton. Yeah. Um, we were first notified, uh, uh, requested. Um, to, to order the sign removed in January of, night of this year. And the first response was that um, we would direct the owner of a building to remove the sign. And the, the, um, there's the people who complained are certainly per zoning's definition of an owner, an owner. Um, we try to avoid in, uh, uh, inserting ourselves in, in 
uh, conflicts among condo owners. It's it, for us, it, the ownership of a building has no bearing on that it's a building, that the building code applies, and that zoning applies. And so, um, and, and back and forth emails from, um, I think January, right through October, we kept saying, you're an owner, and no, we're not gonna order the sign down. We could've. Um, there was, we could conceivably have ordered the sign down and then started fining the owner, the person who complained, because the sign wasn't down, um, I opted to, to uh, you know to not insert the building department into this condo association conflict. And the owner, I'm now I'm really confused about who the owner is yeah. uh, and who who owns this sign. Usually, on the outside of a building, a condo, yeah. isn't that the, a common area and it's a responsibility of the whole association? So it uh, it would be, and that that did come up that yes. The only way that the association, which is um, the, the the commercial owner who owns the four units, is a large shareholder of the condominium association, so that person was not willing to comply generally unless there is some formal order. Um, but you know, the, I mean, this raises a very curious issue because this is not the only condominium association in the city, and I think that there's a real disconnect about what ownership is and and what applies where. I mean, this was very clearly a commercial sign. It's very easy to look up the commercial ownership of the building and you would find two names, one of which is the old bookstore, and one of which is all of the other commercial properties within the association. So it's not clear to me why it, the correspondence, you know, it was maybe three emails between my husband and John Fry, um, you know, to try to explain what a condominium is and that there are individual unit owners. And a, a, an order to that commercial unit owner would have been sufficient. It, it wouldn't have sort of inserted into any kind of condo conflict. You know, it's, it's you know, we're talking about the physical structure and there are seven individual people um, who are all attached to various units. And that commercial property is very easily identified with a particular owner. Um, so I, yeah, maybe I, the sign was identified with a prior owner, but the exterior of the building is usually a common area, mm -hmm. which means it's under the control of the association. Right. Which again, that's why we brought it up when John Fry said, resolve this on your own. We did bring this up at a condominium meeting and that particular unit owner agreed to comply and knew that there, that things were out of compliance, that if the building department was going to enforce it there would be a fine you know they they understood all of that and agreed back in March to remove the sign but just opted not to follow through with that uh, thank you I'd like to I, hear I, more uh, I'd, I'd, I'd ask the, the board to look at the definition of in zoning of owner and understand that um, there are um, a large number of different sorts of organizations of condominiums in the city, and we use the definition in zoning of an owner. It's um, the duly authorized agent, attorney, publisher, purchaser, designee, trustee, leasee, or any person having a vested or equitable interest in the use, structure, or lot in question. And certainly the, the, pe the people who are complaining are owners under that definition. And so off letting them know that they needed, to, if they wanted the sign removed, they needed to remove it. They is something that um, I feel we couldn't, um, it's, it's a slippery slope and we, opt not to go down that so would your um, enforcement letter uh, would it not have gone to the association the association doesn't have a name and the association doesn't have a mail a mailing address uh, so it would have had to have been uh, however many seven to ten separate letters to every owner that has a share of ownership mm -hmm. of the exterior facade where that sign was mounted that's information that 
I don't have information about the condo associations, uh, you know, rules, right. articles of it, you know, the, the I, I think honestly, it would be difficult for our department to involve ourselves in those sorts of things. Um, Um, May I answer your question? Uh, so, uh, if you were going to mail a letter to an owner, um, could you find the owners of the building under the tax rolls or whatever? You didn't just have the address of the complainant or um, of the person. If yeah. you know, if we couldn't have gotten them through the assessor's database, we could have gone to the registry of deeds. But it seemed like a pretty simple situation where it, it's something that the condominium association needed to work out for themselves. It wasn't um, the sort of situation, and, and we went back and forth for almost a year. But to take the appellant's position, um, the ordinance does say that a sign is supposed to be removed if it's uh, for a business that isn't there anymore. Right, and we, when the first complaint came in, we responded by telling, um, it was Mr. Poe at that point, that he was an owner of the building and that any actions we took would be, would be directed at him. But not only at him. I don't see where in the zoning's definition of owner we have to go any farther than a single person who's, who has equitable interest in the structure. So you, you're thinking, I think you said before, was it would have led to sort of an absurd outcome where you would be fining the same person who requested that you issue the order to remove the sign? It could, that's, that's what I could see. And, and, that's, and we did point out that that's one of the penalties for not complying. And so if we did issue the order, it, um, you know, the idea that the sign got taken down after we issued the order, after even though we didn't issue the order, the corollary, we issued the order, the sign doesn't come down, we start writing tickets. Um, and it, the, the reason that we wouldn't ultimately, didn't, I opted not to issue the order was to avoid inserting myself in a, in a uh, conflict in a condominium, a condominium association. Well, were there people, was there anyone <clears throat> tell, communicating to your office that they didn't want to take down the sign? No. So what what was the conflict? Just that it hadn't been taken down and despite? Well, that, that, um, and we dealt, with, again, with, with uh, Mr. Poe. Mr. Poe wanted us to issue an order to take the sign. So did you feel like your office was just being sort of asked to get involved in order to fix a, a dispute among unit owners in this condo? Is that that's, that's exactly what we thought. And that's exactly what we attempt to avoid. And, and uh, one, of the, one of the situations that comes up quite frequently is that um, we'll get a complaint about a, a tenant and you know and we respond to a complaint about a tenant by contacting the property we avoid inserting ourselves into um, these sorts of discussions when um, if a tenant is complaining about a landlord the board of health is the authority having jurisdiction over that and they can invite us but the idea of, of we deal with buildings and structures and uses. We don't deal with ownership. Um, the, uh, I think, here, here's my opinion on this, is that 
a sign on a building like this Immerman and Associates building can be part of the history of the building and the people might want it up, might not want to have it. But that's why I asked, was there so, anyone saying so they course, didn't want but, to take it down? But what I'm saying is that there was a complaint to the building inspector that they wanted the sign down. The building inspector followed all the proper procedures to get the sign down, and in the end, the sign came down. No, I think I think we didn't follow all the procedures. We could have issued a formal order um, to, of, of enforcement and notice of violation for a sign. We could have done that, and we opted not to because of the way the situation uh, played, uh, the way the situation evolved. But what I mean, it was, you were in contact. You weren't ignoring. We did, we did respond in writing yeah. uh, on, to every um, time we were contacted about it. I, and then the sign is gone now. So it seems to me that, as you said in the beginning, that it's moot. Everything, all the procedures were, except for fining. Right, again, Someone the court could. would say this is a decision we don't have to make because right. the matter has resolved itself. And, but I think we're being asked to make one anyway, at least. Uh, well, to, to well, from the perspective, <coughs> you know, as I'm not quoting on this, but from the perspective of this as a straightforward request uh, based on an appeal to, come, to ask the city to defend just to come to their defense and follow through on um, upholding the zoning policy feels to me, like I said, Sarah, I question this too, that the removal of the sign, the fact that the sign is gone, is what's moved. That the request here was about the appeal and not about whether the sign is gone or not. Yeah, I, 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 understand, I hear what you're saying, but the appeal is of a decision of the building inspector not to enforce the ordinance that required the removal. But it's been removed. <laughs> I mean, we're sort of dancing around two sides of the same. I'd like to. Um, if, a, if a building is abandoned for, you know, business goes out, goes out of business, then you have a situation where the city, through the building inspector, has the ability to get rid of any signage. If people don't want to get rid of the signage and are not complaining about it, the building inspector stands back. In this case, at the end of a, of a period of time, someone complained to the building inspector to remove the sign. And the building inspector went through all the procedures except for fining someone. Well, and that issuing that an enforcement order. In the there was right. never any enforcement issue. Right. Or but went through, them. was not negligent in any way of, of the thing. He, I mean, he could have stepped in and said that we're going to start fining people after the 30 day period or whatever it is, $100 a day until the sign comes down. But in the meantime, the sign's down. So, so I don't see where there's a problem at all. What I'm, what I'm seeing is perhaps, and I understand that position of getting pulled into things that um, um, there's a lot of personalities involved and and uh, you know, and then and you, you try to you try to help, and then you end up getting you know hit in the face or something. But um, there's there's three other pieces I think. One is that this the motivation of the appellant the, the, the whole beginning of this had to do with a a, 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 a fire. An event that um, was I don't know how, I don't know exactly how catastrophic it was it, but it was um, was there any um, no comment from fire department or anything on this 
Well, there's no yeah, safety yeah, yeah. issues here, right? There's yeah. no safety or, or well, public that was, health or safety issues. That was the discussion, was that if there's a sign that says there's some occupants in here, where's Mr. Eminer? Is he still in the building? The building's burning. Oh, did that? Well, there. but but the offices that Mr. Immerman previously occupied were occupied by people so it could who have been someone else named Immerman necessarily, but it's not like people live as a sign that says people live here and in fact people don't live here. It'd be like if Florence Hardware burned down and people were looking for Orcott and Hussey. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> um, so uh, so if that issue is um, not of particular concern, um, then the next, I think there, there's, a, there's a larger issue is that I would like to empower the building inspector to enforce and have, have power to come down and fine. Um, uh, I think that in this situation, we certainly had the authority and the zoning ordinance would have could have perhaps should have required that we issue the order we declined based on the specific situation the fact that there was no safety issue and the fact that this was an internal conflict and not something that was not doable it wasn't nobody was i don't believe anyone was being I don't, I believe it's simply the, the conflict among the unit owners and that, and, and my decision, the very specific decision was to not get involved in a conflict with, between unit owners in a situation where there's no life safety issues, there's no, uh, isn't a public nuisance, none of that, none of those situations existed. Yeah, go ahead. I think one of the big issues comes back to this notion of what a condominium is. So the, every condominium association in the city is a legal entity, the 32 Masonic Street Trust Association, it's in the Registry of Deeds, it receives mail, it receives a gas bill, um, its property manager is listed with a mailing address in the Registry of Deeds. You know, it is an entity, it is a building. Um, I think maybe the, the, the misunderstanding here was that, yes, there are separate issues about a variety of different things among owners, but this was not one of them. This was a very straightforward sort of low-hanging fruit of this entity, the 32 Basonic Street Trust Association, is out of compliance with a zoning bylaw. We are at risk of being fined and then an agreement to no longer be out of compliance. And then that agreement wasn't followed through on. So it wasn't, as I said earlier, you know, it, it wasn't as if, um, you know, we were like, oh, we're all having conflict among each other and we hate each other. What can we do to make someone's life difficult? Let's file a complaint. Um, it was born out of that event. And there was, you know, the event, it was fairly catastrophic. The building is still condemned. It is not occupied. We have been displaced for the year. Um, you know, the, the fire happened at 6 a.m., so the commercial units were not occupied at that time. Um, but there were significant instances over those, that day and the ensuing days, where multiple parties were attempting to account for not only who was in the building at the, the moment of the fire, but afterwards. And so that was the impetus to say, let's get into compliance. And the, you know, my husband reaching out to the building department was, you know, to sort of say, yes, we understand that we're part of the association. And if you need to issue a citation or begin to fine the association, that that action will compel compliance. That that is what will compel the association as a whole, as represented by you know, it has three out of five trustees now, you know, will compel those trustees to comply. But, you know, every association is just an entity, physical building, there's there's no need to sort of track down every individual owner. It's, um, you know, gets correspondence, et cetera. But Thank you. I have two questions again, playing devil's advocate the other way. You're not saying that the building inspector should never have the discretion not to enforce 
something in that's that's in the ordinance, especially when no, um, when when typically no no there's no threat to safety. I think. I think I would agree with that, but with an asterisk that not all zoning laws in every zoning district have the same import. So I think that when it comes to the central business district and it comes to um, you know visible <coughs> historic properties, et cetera, that. You know, certainly there's always some amount of discretion, but you know this wasn't some far-flung house in the middle of nowhere where no one was going to show up. You know, looking for Immerman Associates lawyers, and you know, but that that our central business district and our downtown historic district, that that's where the application of those laws has the biggest impact on the largest number of people who are in downtown, who are who are interacting with these buildings. And, and what about the idea that do, do you are you suggesting that the office of the building inspector can and should be used sort of as a as a, a tool to uh, um, resolve a dispute or um, with your own? No, no, certainly not. Yeah, certainly not. I mean, it's it's a tool to enforce the the laws that are on the books. I think you know, as they say it. A lot of this, you know, the sign is down, so yes, that's terrific. But a lot of this is not having a consistent way of dealing with condominium buildings. But what, would, just but, but if we issued a decision, there, there's there's no precedent setting in by zoning boards of appeal. Mm -hmm. There's no precedent setting. Every right. application is fact specific. Right. So it's not like if if we issued a decision overturning the decision. Uh, on a point that is, as a practical matter, completely moot. And by the way, if right. we were to get appealed, I guarantee you a court would say, why in the world were they issuing a decision? Yeah. If arguably it's beyond the scope of our authority to issue a decision, because, it, because it's moot, the sign is down. It would be more like to send some sort of a message of like slapping the wrist of the building inspector, which I would not be comfortable with. And I and, and don't mean to be provocative by saying that, but 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 it could be viewed that way. It sort of right. feels like, well, it's moot. It doesn't matter. The sign is down. So, but, but more importantly, it's not like if we don't grant the appeal that that undermines the authority of this or any other section of the building ordinance, uh, of the zoning ordinance, because we don't have precedent setting authority. Right. Every application before us is, is so fact specific, including right. this one, right. obviously. This, this is a right. real, you couldn't make up these facts. Right, um, and I think that that's true, what you say from a legal perspective. Just, you know, so two points, just to echo what Maureen said, you know, my impetus for coming here was that when we saw the decision, it was, you could appeal this decision. It wasn't, you can ask the Zoning Board of Appeals to send a citation, you know, so we took a fairly literal approach of, okay, well, this is about appealing the decision and whether or not the sign is up Which is irrelevant. And so we're not you, lawyers and did so you file the, did, Excuse me, did you file the appeal after the sign was down? Or no, 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 it okay. was, it so was then the, the... The sign coming down to me changes everything. I mean, it's, just, I'm just, it's just... Well, so the I second point I want to make, yeah. knowing that you all don't set legal precedent, is, is just to raise broadly in Northampton the impact of the general approach towards complying with zoning when when it is clear that things are not enforced. So the sandwich boards is a great example. When there are business owners who see, oh, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to have a sandwich board on Main Street because I'm blocking you know, the ADA accessible sidewalk, et cetera. When there is no enforcement because someone isn't complaining, it perpetuates. And then other folks who are in compliance say, well, that's a real bummer because I'm paying $3,000 a month in rent. I'd love to have a sandwich board, but you know, so it, it creates this very unusual tension between what what laws people choose to follow and what laws they don't when they see what the approach is in town. So like sandwich boards are one of the areas that we do enforce quite vigorously. There's this really specific and relatively new sandwich board ordinance and the sandwich boards on Main Street by and large um, and are in compliance with that ordinance. Also, we're not talking about something that blocks handicapped accessibility with this sign. Uh, right, right. No, I, I know it's a limited it's analogy. Yes. Yeah. Zoning is not simply about safety. I mean, we do keep coming back to safety, but zoning laws are not simply about safety. They're about quality of life on other levels. 
there about um, broader plans for you know, trees, for other, for things that don't just have to do with safety. There about um, lighting, signage. Some of it's aesthetic. But if but if the building inspector had to enforce every s sentence in the ordinance every time. It's, it's physically impossible. I agree with you there, but I and just I feel like it's not simply a it's a job description, issue. but it's an impossible task. Well, right. So you know, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in uh, slapping the hand. I'd rather give that hand a hammer. I want to make him more powerful. I want him to be able to enforce things um, and not have to. Uh, I, I really understand the, the reluctance to, you know, get tangled in anything with a condo board. Um, and, I, I mean, it's hard enough dealing with any owner. And, um, and all of the decisions that go through his office that we never see. I mean, there's, I don't know how many hundreds um, in any given time period. That's a, that's a lot. And uh, I respect that. And I I appreciate that, uh, and I, I, uh, I, I don't want, um, I don't want that office to be um, understaffed, underworked, uh, um, overworked. Excuse me. Um, I want to have time to. Yeah, it's true. Not you're not you're not, not you know enforcing every letter of every ordinance every minute, but um, if we're going to have a rule of law. There has to be some uh, enforcement. So I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's very important that he has discretion. And I'd like for him also to have. Um, I think the, pro the the thing about condo boards, if it's if there's an aversive situation where where the city is disincentivized to enforce something because condo boards are problematic. They are also ubiquitous. They're all over the place. How many are there? And, and, and is that going to keep undermining his authority? I don't want to see that. See, I think all of these discussions I would, I would consider to be very important if the sign were still up. Ah. But there is no matter in controversy. The sign has come down. In a way, you could say the system worked because of the appeal or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the sign has come down. But um, I just. I, so the action of the appeal and the city sending the cards notification um, was effective. It achieved mm -hmm. your goal, or your ultimate good. goal, which was. Right which is what you were asking the ins building inspector to do. And it was by an unexpected route that the goal was right. achieved. Ex an expensive, the, unexpected route. Yes, we had to yeah. pay to make that happen. So we had to effectively subsidize the city's enforcement yeah. of it. I'm, so I'm, I'm for both of you. <laughs> I mean, one thing I will offer, you know, I, I understand where you're all coming from. I, I think, once again, to drive this home is that the bigger issue is we cannot have condominium associations be wholesale sort of put in this kind of strange category with this assumption that any interaction with the building department is because there's conflict or you know that it's it's this passionate personal thing it's not it's a building and it's a business entity and there's a board and in nearly all cases or in many cases here that board and that entity has hired a professional property management company you know, so these are very findable entities that the building department can be interacting with in a very professional and, and dispassionate way, as one would with any other individual building owner or property owner around the city. Right. So to the extent that, that your board and the municipal department can work together to ensure that the municipal department has the ability to interact with this particular type of property, which is ubiquitous, and, well, and there are more of them that are being built. Yeah. See, our, our, I'm not sure our board generally plays that role, other than in this mm -hmm. hearing to say, to ask the building inspector to take into consideration for future uh, matters, especially involving condominiums, 
um, in the points that have been raised. That, 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 I, I, there's I, some lessons here. I, could, no I would question. go to the planning board and ask them to amend uh, or change the, the definition of owner yeah. from any person having vested interest to all persons having vested interest. Oh. If we did, if we were to deal with uh, condominiums, and, and this is not the first time we've had to deal with a condominium, and this is not the first time that we've dealt directly with one of the individuals in a condominium association and had them then dealing with the rest of the condominium association. There was a protracted situation for the stairs that lead from South Old, uh, New South Street down to Clark Avenue, and that it ended up being resolved, but we didn't we didn't order everybody who owned the building. We ordered a single individual because of the way the, the zoning is written. You know, we could just as easily be sitting here with the building inspector having ordered the people to take the sign down and they didn't want it down because they were part of the in, in other words, they could have appealed the decision of building yeah. inspector. Yeah. Although the, 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 the ordinance is pretty clear on its face that it's supposed to be removed. Yeah. I'm not sure there'd be much strength to that appeal. Um, well, that's a good point. But it, I mean, I, to me, there's nothing here, really. Because the sign has been taken down. Because By the way, it requires a unanimous vote to overturn a decision of the building commissioner, so maybe we should move on. I just had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll give people a chance for any closing remarks. Okay. But um, I wanted, I, the reason I was trying, I let, I tried to reach you today is mm -hmm. this, I'm, look, I'm looking at the staff report. You know from planning board, you right. get, we get a staff sure. report. And uh, it was ambiguous to me. I just couldn't tell yeah, if that was a same. recommendation one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a recommendation yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, you're just saying yeah. it's, it's very, well, I'll, I'll read it. It's a public record. That it, uh, the staff recommendation said, many provisions of the ordinance are not enforced until or unless a complaint is filed. Though there may be few, if any, complaints ever filed for old signs that are not removed, it would be consistent with typical enforcement procedures to rarely enforce some aspects of the zoning, um, assume that zoning code or zoning ordinance, um, and only when a complaint was filed. Now here a complaint was filed, to be clear, um, but the goal of the complaint has already been achieved. The sign has been removed. Um, any other questions? From the board before we I'm glad you that. raised that because I was confused with that wording too. The word rarely made me hmm. made me think it was going down a different path. It'd be consistent with typical enforcement procedures to rarely enforce some I think that goes to my point that there are countless rules in the zoning ordinance right. and it's not physically possible, no matter how well staffed an office is, hmm. to enforce all of them. Granted we had a complaint here. And if that sign were still up there could be a very different outcome here because we would still have a what courts call a matter in controversy. Um, so uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Be, and then we can, if there are any more comments from no. uh, either party. No, my my you know, observation is I'm glad this came up and I see it sort of as a cautionary tale. For yeah, I think that I think some of the uh, cost some money and I'm, I'm sorry about that but I think that um, the building inspectors raised a really interesting and important point that there's language in the ordinance that contributed to his dilemma here um, and uh, um, and I don't know if that's something that could be addressed or what the process would be it would be a change in the language that would ultimately go to city council because it's an amendment to the I mean, ordinance. It, it could be. I mean, there's also, I don't think the ne language necessarily has to be changed because, again, the building commissioner has broad discretion. Broad discretion, which, so, which is necessary. Um, that's, right. And so I, I, that's the other point is you, you don't want to go to the opposite extreme and make it so specific that it might limit that discretion. I don't know that right. you necessarily would be, but I'm not sure. I mean, yes, the language could be changed. I'm not sure that, um, um, 
you know, we can look at it. It's definitely not some, obviously this doesn't come up all the time. So um, it's, it's definitely not one of the things that's been you know, put in press. Down. It might be something for interested members of your condo association to take up, probably starting with city council or, or yeah, I mean, it can have started the staff level for sure. It's not, yeah, I mean, so again, it's just, office. it's not, it's not one of those things that's happening, happening daily and we have an issue with. You right. know, typically I mean, no, when no there's things that are, will happen more and more. But no matter what Good. anyone's reaction might be about how that played out or whether it should have, um, it's a, a, a legitimate point sincerely made by the building inspector that that uh, there, there is that ambiguity in that question. And also, what, we, what we're balancing here is the need for enforcement and the seriousness of, of knowing that the language in an ordinance means something, will be enforced, versus the equally legitimate need of the, of the building inspector to have discretion in doing his job because of the sheer magnitude of his job, and all you know, and then you add into it this this idea that um, part of that discretion in this case, I think, included a determination that you didn't want to get involved with what you viewed as anyway, but honestly and um, and understandably as sort of a private dispute among condo owners. But that was the perception uh, that that is being described to us. Um, any anything else from uh, you? Have you been able to say what you wanted to say, or anything else you wanted to tell us? Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say, you know, I think I appreciate this discussion. Um, I think, you know, David and Marie, you both raised very good points, which is yes, there might be this huge volume. There's no way to to go around actively enforcing, you know any and all violations that are occurring at all times in our city. It's, there'd be too many, which is why the, the trade-off is making it a complaint-based system. And I don't know how many complaints come in. I don't know how many complaints come in from the Central Business District. My guess is not thousands a month or, you know, I mean, I, I'm very privileged having served on the planning board and been aware of what the process is. So my assumption is that there are many people in condominium associations who don't even don't even know what the municipal legal remedy is when things are you know when their association is out of compliance with something. Um, but I think that looking specifically at that language, you know, for legislative matters and planning board and you know full council, look at that language to ensure that. People who live in condominium associations need to also know that they are protected by the same zoning laws that an individual building owner would be protected by, and that's that's kind of where things there. There should never be a question of, you know, oh, who do I go to, or you know, who controls this, um, and yep. you know, and I respect that the building inspector is kind of empathetic or sympathetic to to the fact that condominiums include lots of different people and personalities, but. You know, I think to the extent that the the protocol is to presume that complaints that are coming in, that these things involve technical matters. You know, that, that that maybe there are other people who try to use laws as a weapon. You know, like we're not those people. Um, you know, and, and, and I didn't mean to suggest. That no, that's no, what I you know you were. Right. Um, that was but, an example. You know, that when the the sort of feelings and perceptions about an interpersonal dynamic are kind of undermining this very kind of straightforward technical issue you know that if that's going to happen simply because it's a condominium versus you know it's thorns or it's another individual property owner building you know that that, that kind of um, makes it very difficult for condominium owners and we do know there will be more of them here in the city um they're you know they're the ones being built around town you know and we know that and so it's it is i, I think looking more carefully at that language you know to ensure that that it's very clear what the legal controlling entity and contact is would be enormously helpful yeah i think there are really three points i'm hearing one is um the letter of this ordinance is crystal clear the sign is required to come down secondly yes you understand that the building inspector is extremely busy and has to have discretion right. in enforcement 
And that is why it is effectively a complaint-based system. Thirdly, you made a complaint, which is what is supposed to trigger the enforcement of a crystal clear ordinance. Um, and fourthly, now that we've heard some more background from the building inspector's perspective, there is this, conf not confusion, but ambiguity created in the case of a condominium, which is concerning, because there are lots of condominiums. Um, I'm hearing all four points. If the sign were still up, mm -hmm. um, then this would be a different hearing and, mm -hmm. and a lot, a, a different, it would be, it would be a different situation. Yeah. Uh, taking into account. Did you all know it came down? Or did you I walked it? by. I walked by because I had the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. And I said, and I remember the sign. Everyone knows that sign. Right. And I saw it was down. And I was like, that's the other reason I was going to call you. What day did it come down? Um, gosh, I have have to look at my texts, but a couple days ago. I mean, I yeah, know. within the last week, I think. Yeah, I mean, we got the postcards. That's the other reason I I, I rang you and didn't even bother to leave a voicemail. I was going to say, isn't the sign gone? What? I was like. <laughs> But we've had we've hashed that out enough. Yeah. So anyway, um, anything else? Uh, sure. yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask about the other sign that's still on the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah, that's on the financial. Why is that not part of the issue? Have, has she moved permanently? Uh, she's moved to the Felt Building, and so the, she's gone. the notification on the door just says we have moved to the Felt Building. And she doesn't um, intend to come back, as far as you know, after the place is fixed up. I, mean, I just assume that was the answer. Yeah, we're not that unit owner, so I, I would yeah, assume yeah. that you know that that company was a tenant of. The oh, unit I owner. see. That was a tenant. Um, and yeah, and I think it, you know, for us, we didn't include it in our complaint because nobody asked us. About, you know, it didn't come up multiple times in conversation. No one said to us, like, "Hey, where's Thompson Financial?" You know, but. The law firm came up multiple times in multiple instances within hours of the fire, um, but, and so that's why it was sort of on the radar. Right. And, but what, what, what should I should ask why why you're why you're asking about that? I didn't let I, I didn't let you finish. Um, you were I just curious. I wondered what I just I was I was curious as to why we were dealing uh, over the course of a year with one specific sign, not and, not realizing that there were other violations on the building right okay that's interesting good nobody knows the answer yes <laughs> yeah, size and visibility it's, it's, it's substantially smaller and lower um this is for another day but i was curious that emerald sign is so large was it within a code well, so actually, having multiple having multiple signs. No, you can have different more more than one sign. If there's more than one business right. there, okay. Right. So those but there those is a limit to the total sign. It was probably a little bit over oversized based on the frontage, the, the, the surface, of the, the surface the area of the right. of the sign against the area of the of the story or the of the facade that the sign was mounted on. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, uh, I move we close the public hearing. Okay, second. <coughs> All in favor, unanimous. Um, so one of the things I like about one board is how specific our jurisdiction is. And I also like the way David, you uh, clarify that occasionally. So here we have a situation where um, we're being asked to make a, deci a decision on something. Uh, and I, I, I I take your point about it being um, moved because the sign is down and it is very specific to this enforcement request. So no further relief. The requested relief is no longer needed. Um, so, but we do we we do need a motion just on well, the. Let's yep. hear the um uh, the 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 specific relief is it would have been to so overturn the decision of the building inspector not to enforce the ordinance but enforcement is no longer needed because there's nothing to enforce the sign is gone I mean you could make a motion that to deny the request based on the fact that the, the um, sign has been yeah, yeah that the sign has been removed so right. there's there's no need to uh, to to grant to to grant the 
the appellant's request of relief. There's no, no, no relief. There's no relief to be granted. Okay. I make a motion that we uh, deny the appeal of the building commissioner's determination for a sign and deny the appeal of the building commissioner's determination for a sign at 32 Masonic Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. Map ID 31D-120 on the grounds that there's no sign there and that everything has been taken care of. Second. And just, I think we've discussed it enough, but, but the idea in my mind is that uh, the relief that has been requested and that is the purpose of the appeal is no longer necessary because this sign has been removed. And in a different situation, if it hadn't been removed, it would be a different discussion um, so the, the motion was to deny right so right. so all and in favor seconded. of and she seconded so all in favor of denying so yeah, that's you know, okay thank you thank oh you. interesting Thanks. discussion really <laughs> useful well Oh, I guess we have to move to adjourn. Oh. So, uh, and there are no minutes, right? So, 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 so.